There's nothing scarier than watching a horror movie based on real events because knowing it actually happened is what gives you those terrifying nightmares. And although many of the scenes in these movies have been exaggerated by Hollywood in order to achieve extra scares, you can't escape the fact that they are based on some degree of truth. Number 10. The Girl Next Door This movie was based on what is said to be one of the most terrible crimes of Indiana State. On October the 26, 1965, Indianapolis police answered a call saying a young girl had died. The girl was 16-year-old Sylvia Likens who was tortured and eventually killed. She was covered with bruises and small wounds which were later revealed to be over 100 cigarette burns. She also had a large number 3 branded on her chest and the words I'm a prostitute and proud of it burnt directly on her stomach. Sylvia and her younger sister were staying with the Banachevsky family while their parents worked with a travelling carnival. Although Gertrude Banachevsky was the main instigator, she encouraged two of her own children along with a number of neighbourhood kids to participate in the torture that eventually resulted in Sylvia Likens' death. When the police finally arrived on the scene, Sylvia had already been dead for 8 to 12 hours. If you decide to watch this movie, please be warned that it is quite disturbing and baffling that something this gruesome could have happened in 1965. Number 9. Nightmare on Elm Street When you think about horror movies that are based on real events, Nightmare on Elm Street doesn't seem like an obvious choice. But as is often the case with movies based on true stories, the real inspiration for Freddy Krueger is a lot more true to life than you might think. In 1977, over 100 Laos refugees inexplicably died in their sleep. All of these people were perfectly healthy and although their deaths were attributed to cardiac arrhythmia, most superstitious Lao people blame an evil spirit called Dab Tsuam. This evil spirit appears in the form of a jealous woman and kills you in your sleep. After healthy men all over the world started mysteriously dying in their sleep, the phenomenon was labelled Sudden Unexpected Nocturnal Death Syndrome, otherwise known as SUNS. The victims were primarily men around the age of 33 and known to be generally healthy. Several witnesses also reported that they had heard the victims emit groans or experience breathing trouble shortly before dying. It's quite disturbing to think that having a bad nightmare can actually kill you and I'm sure the next time you watch Nightmare on Elm Street, you'll have a newfound respect for this movie. Number 8. The Right. The horror genre has produced a number of movies about possession and exorcism, but only a handful have been based on real events. The Right, starring Anthony Hopkins, is based on Father Gary Thomas, a modern-day exorcist in San Jose, California. Matt Baglio, an American journalist in Rome, wrote a book about Father Gary's exorcist training in 2005, while Father Gary was apprenticing with an Italian priest at over 80 exorcisms. Although many of the scenes in the movie were exaggerated for the Hollywood screen, possession is taken very seriously by the Catholic Church. Before an exorcism is approved, there are months of medical and psychological examinations carried out to clarify whether that person is truly possessed or just suffering from a mental disorder. Father Gary said in a CNN interview that watching the movie was very emotional for him. He said, and I quote, I found some of the scenes very riveting. I found some of them very profound. They're very accurate and this is what I've seen in real life. Number 7. Fire in the Sky on November the 5th, 1975, in Snowflake, Arizona, a logger by the name of Travis Walton and five of his co-workers headed to work in the White Mountains. While driving back from work, they came across an unidentified flying object. Curious to learn more, Travis gets out of the truck and is struck by a bright beam of light coming directly from the UFO and is sent flying several feet backwards as if pushed by an unseen force. Fearing for their own lives, the other five men flee the scene. One of the men, Mike Rogers, decides to go back to the same spot to retrieve Travis, but he was nowhere to be found. Once they make their way back into town, they tell their story to the sheriff, only to be met with skepticism and in turn suspected of foul play, even though there was no motive or knowledge of Travis's whereabouts. The men all took a lie detector test and all passed, with the exception of one man who had an inconclusive result. Five days later, Travis Walton is found at a local gas station, naked, dehydrated and incoherent. During a welcome home party, Walton suffers a flashback of the alien abduction. In his flashback, he recalls waking up inside a slimy cocoon. Breaking out of its membrane, he finds himself in a zero-gravity environment inside a cylindrical enclosure with walls containing other similar cocoons. He is also horrified to discover that one of the cocoons contained decomposing human remains that had been dissected and still semi-conscious. 
He was then apprehended by two extraterrestrial creatures that covered him with an elastic material and subjected him to a traumatic experiment in which a gelatinous substance was shoved into his mouth, his jaw clamped open, a device inserted into his neck, and he was forced to endure an ocular probe while fully conscious during the experience. In 1993, the loggers took another polygraph examination and all passed with flying colours, collaborating their story and innocence. Number 6. Annabelle This movie is based on a Raggedy Ann doll allegedly possessed by the spirit of a dead girl named Annabelle Higgins. According to demonologist Ed and Lorraine Warren, a student nurse was given the doll by her mother in 1968. Donna, a college student at the time, was living with her roommate Angie and neither one of them thought there was anything special about the doll. But eventually they started to notice that the doll would move on its own and even though the movements were subtle to begin with, over time it seemed to become fully mobile. The girls would leave the apartment with Annabelle on Donna's bed and return home to find it on the couch. But being the modern women that they were, they didn't really believe in this type of thing until things started to get even weirder. Donna the nurse started to find pieces of parchment paper in the house with the message, help me, written on it. To make things even creepier, no one in the house had actual parchment paper. The final straw was when Donna came home one night to find the doll on her bed with some type of red liquid coming out of its hands. Although this story might seem a little far-fetched to some, there have been many video accounts of dolls moving as if possessed by some unearthly force. Ed and Lorraine Warren have since removed the doll and placed it in their museum after pronouncing it demonically possessed. The Warrens built a locked case for Annabelle and she resides there to this day. Number 5. Deliver Us From Evil This movie was inspired by retired NYPD sergeant and Catholic demonologist Ralph Sarchi. Sarchi served 18 years as an NYPD sergeant in the South Bronx precinct. Although he was raised in a Roman Catholic Christian family, Sarchi's faith wavered in the past but is now fully restored. His career as a Catholic demonologist has included regularly meeting and accompanying Ed and Lorraine Warren on their cases. The 2014 movie follows Sarchi, played by Eric Banner, into the paranormal investigations he immersed himself in, all the while taking care of his family and working the midnight to 8am shift as a cop. He has investigated a number of cases involving demonic possession and assisted in many exorcisms. When interviewed by The Blaze and American News and Entertainment Network, he stated that he has never accepted a penny for his assistance and has to fund travelling expenses himself when he takes on cases. The movie itself got mixed reviews but did manage to gross an impressive $110 million at the box office. Number 4. The Mothman Prophecies in West Virginia folklore, the Mothman is a creature reportedly seen in the Point Pleasant area from November the 12th, 1966 to December the 15th, 1967. This man-sized flying creature was first spotted by five men who were digging a grave at a cemetery near Clendon in West Virginia and spotted shortly after by two couples from Point Pleasant who told the police they saw a large grey creature whose eyes glowed red when the car's headlights picked it up. They described it as a large flying man with 10 foot wings following their car while they were driving in an area outside of town known as the TNT area, the site of a former World War II munitions plant. During the next few days, many other people reported the sighting, including two volunteer firemen and Mason County Sheriff George Johnson. When the Silver Bridge collapsed on the 15th of December 1967, many people believed that this was directly connected to the Mothman. The main reason for this is due to a photo that was taken of the alleged Mothman on top of the bridge only days before its collapse. Although many people believe this photo is of the Mothman, science writer Sharon A. Hill proposed that the photo showed nothing more than a large owl carrying away a snake. Now although the image is not all that clear, it doesn't exactly look like an owl or any conventional bird that I've ever seen. The 2002 movie is based on the 1975 book of the same name, written by John Keel. The movie had mixed reviews and currently has a score of only 52% on Rotten Tomatoes. Even so, I personally feel it's not a bad movie. Number 3. The Haunting in Connecticut This 2009 psychological horror film tells the story of the Snedeker family, who in 1986 rented an old house in Southington, Connecticut, which to their horror turned out to be a former funeral parlour. Not long after they moved in, the eldest son began seeing ghosts and other terrifying visions. 
The experiences soon spread to the other family members and progressively got worse. Even more disturbing was the claim that both parents were raped and sodomized by demons. One day, as Carmen the mum mopped the kitchen floor, she was horrified to see the water turn blood red and smelling of decaying flesh. Like with most of the movies on our list, the family finally contacted self-styled demonologist Ed and Lorraine Warren, who arrived and proclaimed the Snedeker house to be infested with demons. The Snedekers have told their story many times, including on national talk shows and in a Discovery Channel TV show. However, not everyone was convinced that the family was telling the truth, especially their former landlady who has stated that no one before or after the Snedekers had reported any unusual activity in the home. Furthermore, novelist Ray Garden wrote a book based on the Snedekers story in 1992 called In a Dark Place, The Story of a True Haunting, which the family stood to make money from the book deal. So whether or not the Snedekers claims are real or not, only they know the truth. Nevertheless, the movie is entertaining. Number 2. The Entity If you like horror movies based on real events, then The Entity is an absolute must-watch. In 1974, Doris Betha and her four children were living in this small home located in Culver City, California. Doris was repeatedly attacked and even raped by one of the entities. She had kept these events to herself until one day visiting a bookstore where she overheard Dr. Barry Taff and his associate Kerry Gaynor having a conversation about the paranormal. She approached the two men and told them that her house was haunted. Dr. Taff and his associate arrived at the house on the 22nd of August in 1974 and found the property in shambles. They noticed a strained relationship between Doris and her three sons and also reported a feeling of pressure in their ears while being inside the home. Doris claimed that spirits would physically attack her and initially both Dr. Taff and Gaynor were very skeptical. After all, it's hard enough to prove a ghostly apparition, let alone a ghostly rape. It wasn't until they saw the bruises in her inner thighs and all over her body, as well as people outside the family corroborating her story that they took her claims more seriously. The children also saw these entities and even dubbed the more prominent ghost as Mr. Who's It. The team decided to set up shop and brought in high-speed cameras and photographers as well as other investigators and equipment. With 30 people all crammed in a small room, Doris was instructed to summon the beings by swearing and yelling at them. Suddenly strange lights started manifesting around the room and this was shortly followed by a green mist in the corner that grew to the form of a muscular upper torso of a man. Although high-speed cameras were brought in to capture the phenomena, very little of substance wound up on film. The most famous image is the one showing the arc-shaped light above Doris's head. What's amazing about this image is if the arc on the wall was really on the wall, it would be bent due to the corner on the right. This would mean the arc is floating in space and therefore dimensional and very difficult to fake. They also noticed a foul stench that was so bad a number of the investigators started to vomit. What was really interesting is that once Doris moved out of the house, the paranormal activity stopped and followed Doris to her next home. Could she herself have been responsible for conjuring up this evil entity? Number 1. The Exorcist Out of all of the movies on our list, The Exorcist is still regarded as the best horror movie to this day. The story about a priest who drives Satan out of an innocent child is actually inspired by a real exorcism that took place half a century ago. The real exorcist was a Roman Catholic priest from St. Missouri by the name of William Bowder. He received a call from a fellow priest, Raymond Bishop, who relates a story about a woman who suspects that something evil has taken over her son, Richard. Apparently, the woman's sister-in-law, Millie, came over one night and introduced the boy to a Ouija board, which is quite similar to what actually happened in the exorcist movie. The first weird thing they encounter is a leaking sound throughout the house, but there doesn't seem to be any leaky faucets. Not long after this, the sister-in-law unexpectedly dies without any illness and Richard is devastated by this. In the days that follow, they hear thumps and footsteps around the house. They initially suspect mice, but an exterminator finds absolutely nothing. This is followed by things in the house moving around by themselves, so the family starts to suspect some type of poltergeist activity. This unsettling and surreal activity suddenly takes a frightening turn. It moves out of the walls and into Richard's bed. He also starts developing marks all over his body. Their own Lutheran pastor was also not able to help the boy and suggested they find a Catholic priest. 
So Father William Bowder and his longtime friend Raymond Bishop visit the boy and as Father William starts praying, Richard has words appear on his chest in the form of deep cuts. This convinces Father William that the boy was indeed possessed and realised that he would have to perform an exorcism in order to rid the child of the evil entity. The exorcism continues on for many days but Richard becomes so violent that his parents are no longer able to handle the ordeal. So the priest recommends that the boy be taken to a Catholic hospital in St. Louis. Walter Halloran, now retired in Wisconsin, is the only surviving eyewitness. His job was to restrain Richard during the exorcism but was also witness to many unexplainable events during this time. The exorcism in all took 28 days and although there was no spinning head or green vomit, the priests involved were convinced that they were dealing with a real life possession. Shortly after the exorcism, a loud powerful blast is heard throughout the hospital, but yet there was no sign of an explosion. Whether Richard was really possessed by the devil, or it was all just an elaborate prank, it doesn't take anything away from the movie which continues to scare the living bejesus out of people to this day, and I'm sure for many years to come. I would love to know which movie you thought was the closest to the real events, and feel free to leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video and any of my other content, please give me the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also, don't forget to click the bell icon to make sure that you get notified the next time I upload a new video. Until next time, please take care and always be good to each other.